Okay, here's uh, part two of the Thermal Tank Pacific TF2 temperature and flow sensor. Um, finally got around to fitting it to my rig. Bit of fun and games there. So, um, yeah, so here she is. Sorry. Okay, so it's got very similar functionality to the original TF1. Um, the left up and down arrows basically provide a brightness adjustment. Uh, here we go. So you can cater the brightness for your particular RGB setup. Um, it's also got the uh, Fahrenheit temperature switch for those of you in the States. Um, of course, the rest of us will use that. And you can also set the alarm uh, thresholds for both temperature, which can be adjusted up and so currently it's on default. Uh, you can obviously change it to whatever you'd like. Um, if you hit that set button again, that wrong one, that one, then you can set the minimum flow rate before it goes in alarm. So if the temperature goes above 45 degrees or below, and the flow rate goes below 60, either will give you an alarm. I can quickly simulate it just by shutting off the pump, which I don't like to do, but uh, hang on. We should take it out of set mode first. There we go. And there's the alarm that's kicked in. And now it's reset again because it's back to normal flow rate. I'll do that again so you can see it. It's a bit slow to respond. There it goes. Zero liters per hour. And then it'll come back up and should kick back off again. There we go. Um, same thing with the temperature, obviously. If you exceed that uh, 60 degree, uh, 45 degree temperature setting, uh, you'll get an alarm as well. In practice, I've never had them come up, luckily. And you'll see that that flow rate is still showing a higher reading than it probably is. Mm. Well, it says 192 litres an hour. It's usually around the 160, 170 mark. Um, there we go. Yeah, it takes a while to settle down. It's like it's taking an average reading as far as I can tell. Anyway, um, I have been asked about noise. Um, as far as I can tell, it's ex very quiet. I'll just... Uh, no rattling or anything. Um, obviously, if you take the flow rate too high, you probably will get some rattle, and that goes for any flow meter. But no, I'd say it's virtually no noise. It's very minor. You've got to stick your ear right up to it. Um, I've used the original power connection that I had on my TF1 because it's identical, standard 5 volt uh, configura configuration. Um, I have connected it to the Thermaltake RGB controller. However, at this stage, I think they're still finalizing the software, so it's, I'm not able to show its operation in the software. Um, yeah, so that's still coming. There was one other minor issue I had. Uh, you'll see that I've got a Thermaltake Let's go for a different. I've got the Thermal Take uh, RGB Pacific uh, uh, fitting there, uh, and you'll see that I've had to put a small extension on the left hand side. The reason I've had to do that is, as far as I can tell, the thread on the RG, tell them, Thermal Take RGB fitting is a little bit longer. And the problem with that is, I wasn't able to get it to seal properly on the housing. Now I think this is specifically an issue with these fittings. Uh, I have contacted Thermaltake about it and they're looking into it. Um, but it looks like all other fittings that I've got, which are all, you know, that's Big Sky, Barrow and probably any other fitting that you get your hands on, 
all seal perfectly without an issue. So in this car, in this state uh, case, I've got a, uh, I think that's a Barrow uh, right angle, uh, which is screwing in perfectly and doesn't have an issue. And on this side, I've used a, I think it's also a Barrow, very small extension, um, which has enabled it to get a seal and then we'll take fitting screws into that. So it's not a big deal. Um, just something to keep in mind if you do have thermal take Pacific and or RGB fittings because I think they're the same That you may want to be careful and do some very quick uh, checks first uh, during filling uh, with Paper towel or plastic in places just in case Because that's the last thing you want to happen Okay, so that's pretty much it the uh, thermal take TF2 RGB flow meter temperature sensor creates very nice sort of display and I must admit I'm quite happy with that um, now also what I'm going to show is I managed to get some other TT RGB plus software which I gotta think is actually where they're heading with the new TT RGB setup um, so what I'll do is I'll just pause for a sec and come back and I'll just run you guys through that software because it actually looks very interesting uh, and I think some of you will be interested in it. So I'll be back. Okay, so this is the new version 2.0 Thermaltake RGB Plus software. Um, it looks very different to the original software which is still currently the only one you can get um, anyone who's used it straight away will see this looks very different they've now got all the controllers in like a pictorial type arrangement uh, in my case i'm running five controllers uh, so a total of 25 devices um, as you can see i already can set them up for what devices i've got connected um, and verify that it actually works and it seems pretty good. So in here is where you actually set your devices. Um, so if you click on one of the ports, you'll see all of the current Thermaltake products become available in the bottom. Um, and then you can just basically choose the one you want and it'll have that picture up there, which is then configuring it. Once you're done in here, you save it and you can move on to all the other stuff. So, um, there's a lot more monitoring in this software. So, my PC basically gives you settings on your processor, graphics card, and the Thermaltake Tough RAM RGB that I'm running here as well. Um, interestingly, in this software, they've basically integrated the Thermaltake, I think it's DPG or DPS software which gave you full access to everything inside the Thermaltake power supplies into this um, RGB Plus software. Um, and you can see that here. So it basically gives you all of the settings from the power supply in one relatively neat window, um, including how much power it's consumed and everything, current voltages, temperatures, power supply, fan speed, etc. Um, which is nice, because in the past you used to have to use a separate software and it wasn't compatible with the RGB Plus. Um, there's also all the fans in one nice, neat, handy window. I haven't named them yet. Um, so you can play with their speed, you can uh, see the speed, you can change whether they're PWM or silent. Um, and that all seems to be functioning pretty well. Um, so there's that as well. Um, and then you've got the customized lighting section. Hang on, I think I've missed something. Uh, so connect. There is a sync section, but I don't think they've finished that yet because there's nothing in there. But needless to say, uh, the software seems to be compatible with all of the devices I've got and the whole lot of synchronized without an issue. Haven't had a chance to play with individual customizations as yet, but I'm pretty confident that'll work. 
So this is how they've done it. Uh, much nicer, neater arrangement. So they've broken down the actual devices into their uh, types at the top. And when you click on the various devices, you can uh, you get a picture or representation of uh, what the RGB arrangement's going to be. There's a the tough RAM. Uh, you could also group them all, which is what I've done in this scenario. So the whole lot's in one little group. So if you change one thing, it changes the whole lot. Uh, profile to save it, etc. You can create new profiles. Curious to see if they've allowed you to create a lot more profiles because the previous software only had the five profiles and they effectively tied to each controller, so it wasn't the greatest. Uh, so down the bottom, uh, there's all the standard current uh, patterns that they've got, uh, which don't look like they've added anything new as yet, um, which is interesting. Uh, the information temp and weather is one of their other um, effects. I uh, haven't been too impressed with that. So, yeah, so effectively it looks like the deal is you, if you've grouped them, uh, pick the first device, click select all, uh, pick your uh, pattern, in this case I'm using the radar effect, um, or change your color. Uh, so we'll just go, let's just change it to red and then we'll apply it down the bottom. You can also customize the RGB values, uh, which means you can set up pretty much any color you're after. Apply that, and as you can see, that's instantly flowed through to everything except for the tough RAM RGB. For some reason, it's not connecting to the group, so this is why I'm thinking it's still software in the working, so I just ah, select all. Uh, so there's my tough, there's a tough RAM. I've selected it. Select all the tough RAM devices and make it red. Apply it, and as you can see, the tough RAM has now gone red as well. So yeah, uh, that all seems to function pretty well. That so they've basically integrated not only the power supply, original power supply software into it, but also the tough RAM software which means you don't have to run multiple programs to get your RGB working. One program will do the whole lot. So this is way better than they've done with any of the other versions. Um, some of the functionality here doesn't work, but I'd say, like I said, it's a work in progress. But I don't think it's got much to go before they release it. Um, the only thing I did notice is it won't... Uh, where was it? It won't um, transfer across all the names. If you've named your power, all your fans or devices in your uh, in the older 1.43 uh, RGB Plus software, they won't transfer across. Neither will the devices or any patterns that you've selected. So you're starting from scratch again. Uh, small bonus is if you go back to 1.43, it picks up the original settings you had, so you don't lose anything. Um, <laughs> write it all down first, then move into here and. Rename them all will be my guess. Um, so yeah, so that's the new uh, Thermaltake RGB Plus 2.0 version software. I thought it was quite interesting to see it. I hadn't seen it, and I thought others might want to see it as well. So uh, yeah, any questions? Uh, yeah, just leave them in the comments section. Uh, I'll try and help where possible. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it guys, so thanks for watching, and yeah, please subscribe. <laughs>